So we've known for many years that the prognosis for patients with left ventricular dysfunction, heart failure, is poor. And for many years we've had a very good range of treatment options with medical treatments and more recently with cardio, cardiac re resynchronization therapy. The key question is whether mitral regurgitation, which is a marker of poor prognosis in these patients, uh, and the correction of mitral regurgitation can impact on the prognosis uh, and improve the outcome in clinical terms as measured by mortality or need for rehospitalization. And in the Mitra France study, which has been uh, publicized today at the European Society Congress, we heard the results of this long-awaited randomized control trial. So the first randomized control trial evaluating the, the mitral clip or transcatheter edge-to-edge -edge repair of the mitral valve was published many, many years ago, very early in the experience with the device and at a time when both uh, patients with degenerative and functional mitral regurgitation were being treated. In the years since, many thousands of patients have been treated across Europe and elsewhere in the world and the results have only been entered in registry studies. And those registries have suggested firstly that the procedure is very safe and that it appears to be very effective in regulating patients' symptoms and improving their quality of life. However, we were lacking the randomised control trial that would enable us to uh, escalate the level of evidence and allow the application of the procedure and its recommendation by international guidelines. So this was a conventional one-to-one -one randomised control trial evaluating in one arm patients managed with optimal medical therapy versus in the other arm patients who receive the same medical therapy but with the addition of transcatheter mitral edge-to-edge -edge repair using the mitral clip device. Over 350 patients were randomised and were then followed up over a one-year period for the primary endpoint of death or need for rehospitalization. Secondary analyses included echocardiographic follow-up, neurohormonal markers, particularly BNP, and secondary analysis evaluating various subgroups, including those with se severe as opposed to moderate left ventricular impairment, and those with different degrees of severity of mitral regurgitation. So the headline result is that the study was negative, showing no impact of the mitral clip device on the primary endpoint of death or need for rehospitalization. Unfortunately, the numbers in the trial were relatively small in terms of subgroup analysis, and it therefore remains uh, conjectural at this stage as to whether there are specific patient groups who will benefit from this treatment. For example, those with moderate as opposed to severe left ventricular impairment, and those with lesser degrees or greater degrees of mitral regurgitation. So the determination of which patients may be suitable for mitral clip therapy remains a very open question. This study is a, is a setback for the, the field of transcatheter mitral intervention, but it's just one of two studies which are going to be very important in shaping the future. We're currently awaiting the results of the COAP trial that will be published at the TCT meeting in San Diego, California in one month's time. And this trial is slightly different in that it is a larger study and it also has a different set of inclusion criteria. So it will only be when both results are available and have been published in full format that we'll be able to synthesize the outcomes and determine the future direction. So the goals of treatment of uh, functional mitral regurgitation are principally to improve patients' symptoms and overall quality of life. So patients who have functional mitral regurgitation and heart failure are frequently very disabled by breathlessness and fluid retention, leg edema, classically, and as a result of this combination of problems are frequently readmitted to hospital. So the design of Mitra France was, was attempting to address a clinically relevant endpoint, mortality or the need for rehospitalization. Those secondary analyses will be looking at symptom burden and impact on quality of life. 